Now I escaped human trafficking. So one day I went to the mall with two of my best friends, Mackenzie and Dylan, and my sister Judy. At the time we were 14, 15, and we were getting prepared for high school, so we were looking for the latest outfits. In the middle of the shopping, there was an older woman that came up to us and said that we looked really pretty. Her name was Miss Dream because she made dreams come true. Well, that's what she told us at least. Miss Dream said that she was a photographer for Vogue, and she showed us pictures of her and Tyra Banks. At that time, I was really into that show, America's Next Top Model, and I loved Tyra. She asked that once we got done shopping, if we could go to the back of the mall and take photos. She said she was thinking of getting us on a magazine. We were so hyped that we literally loved that moment to take the photos. She starts taking pictures of us, and then she gets Judy by herself. While taking pictures, six guys walked up. They picked up my best friends, and when I saw this, I yelled at Judy and told her to run. I ran for maybe 15 seconds before I was caught too and everything went black. Come back for part two. Part two on how I escaped human trafficking. So there were six guys that walked up to us and they picked up my two best friends. Both me and my sister tried to run but before I tried to get away everything turned black. When I woke up I don't know how much time went by but I think we we're all like on a pickup truck. My friends and Judy were all asleep and there were a few other girls piled up on each other. I got up and tried to wake them up. Judy woke up and asked where we were and I told her I, I didn't know. Judy quickly woke up Mackenzie. When Mackenzie sat up, she said she didn't feel well. I asked her what was wrong and she literally throws up on me. And that had to be the most disgusting day because it smelled so bad. But at that moment, I wasn't upset because we didn't know where we were. When Judy tried to wake up Dylan, she wouldn't get up. Judy shook her probably 50 times and she wouldn't wake up. Then she looks at me, bends down and says that she's not breathing and i tell her no she's okay she's right there judy starts crying and says no she's not breathing after this it gets really gruesome i know you guys know that so you can swipe up before the next part come back for part three every time i hit my pregnancy for seven months so i was with this guy and we're gonna call him Jaden. he was a senior and i was a sophomore we were talking got into a relationship and we did the deal we definitely weren't careful. The summer before I got into my junior year, I got really sick, throwing up every day, and my body just felt weird. So I just felt like maybe I should take a pregnancy test, and I did. It came up pregnant, then two weeks later, I finally gained the courage to finally tell Jaden. And he was so mad and said that he can't ever take care of a child because he's going to college and I had to finish high school. I kind of felt bad because he wasn't a little more sensitive, but he made it seem like it was all my fault that I got pregnant. So he told his older brother about it and he gave him $500 to give to me to get an abortion. When he gave me the money, I kind of felt irritated that he didn't even want to go with me to get the abortion. So instead, I took the money, bought new clothes, got my hair done, and nails done. And you won't believe what I did to cover this all up. Come back for part two. Part two on how I hid my pregnancy for seven months. So like I said, I took the $500 my boyfriend gave me to get the abortion. And instead, I bought new clothes, hair, and I got my nails done. After buying all of that, I ghosted my boyfriend for like two weeks because I was scared that he'd be upset that I didn't get the abortion. Then randomly, I get a knock on my door and it's my boyfriend. He popped up at my door. He was mad at me, questioning why I had been talking to him and wondering if I was giving my attention to another man. I was like, no, I lost my phone. And he could tell that I was lying. And he was like, you're cheating on me. You're sick. I never want to see you again. So glad you got rid of that thing because I never want to raise a child with you. Afterwards, I felt so bad. I tried to message him, but he blocked me, and eventually he went off to college. So my plan was to try to hide the fact that I was pregnant, didn't tell my family or friends. Once I had the baby in private, I probably would just throw it in the trash or throw it away somewhere. I don't know. Running out of time, I'll be back with a part three. Part three on how I hid my pregnancy for seven months. So Jaden completely left me, and there I was just, just pregnant. And my plan was to wait till I had a baby and just toss it in the trash somewhere, honestly. And I know this sounds crazy, but at the time I was stressed, very delusional and depressed. I thought if I told him I was pregnant, I would ruin his life. And plus, he'd be mad at me because I didn't get the abortion. And also, I started thinking, like, even if I did want to tell him, I couldn't because he blocked me. So to hide my pregnancy, I would wear baggier clothes. When I was around people, I would sit down and I didn't want to stand up because I didn't want people to see my stomach protruding out. I wouldn't go out anywhere and the only time I came out was to get food and go to the bathroom. I wasn't going to the doctors, taking any medication. I was just dealing with whatever pain the pregnancy was putting me through. Also, during this time, Jaden got a new girlfriend and was posting her. And I was so sad because I was here alone, holding a baby that he didn't want. At times, I felt the S word. Part 4 will be up next. Part 4 on how I hid my pregnancy for 7 months. So the day comes and I start getting contractions 
harder each day. And not to mention, I was still in school. Anyways, the day come and it gets really bad. And I told my mom I felt really sick and I needed to stay home. And randomly, she's like, no, I'm taking you to the doctor's. I'm like, no, I'm not that sick. I just need to stay in bed. And she had said something that really, like, dropped my heart. She said, I know you're pregnant, and I don't understand why you hid it for so long. I was just waiting for you to just tell me on your own. Why didn't you just tell me? And from there, I just broke down in tears. Not because of just the horrible contraction, but because I hid it for this long for her to find out my last couple days. So the hospital asked me who the dad was and what do I plan to do with the baby. I then told her that I just wanted to throw it away and get rid of it. And she just cried because she couldn't understand why. So we get to the gynecologist. They take me in. I stay in for a week. And by then I had my little girl. She was premature. Finally looking at her face. I get ready with me to go hang out with the love of my life. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Get ready with me. We're going to a Tusi concert in LA. If you guys don't know, Tusi is one of my favorite artists. And if you know... Pretty girls love to see. I'm actually going to this concert alone, and you guys, I feel like I have the best experience when I go to concerts alone. If you're watching this, please let this be a sign to go to a concert alone and stop being afraid to go out because you have nobody to go and experience life with. I promise you, your own company is the best company. It's currently 4.56. The concert is at 7 o'clock and I am in the IE. So it's literally going to take me an hour to drive all the way to LA and hopefully there is no traffic, which I highly doubt because LA literally is known for having the worst traffic. If you guys are new here and you guys don't know, I basically go back and forth between LA and the IE and I actually recently had a conversation with one of my good friends and he asked me if I like living in LA and you guys, I hate Los Angeles. I literally hate it. In my opinion, LA definitely is what you make of it, but I only see LA for work purposes. I prefer to be out here in the IE and maybe that has a lot to do because I grew up out here, but I am definitely not a city girl. In fact, you guys, I really don't see myself living in California for the rest of my life. I see myself living somewhere in the East Coast or in Texas, which is so crazy because I literally grew up in Cali my entire life, but I think I'm ready for a change. I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> Just kidding. If you're not aware, I do have a YouTube channel, you guys, and next week I'm uploading my first video ever and you guys, I also did film a prank video on Jacob Morales. So if you guys want to watch that, don't forget to subscribe because <laughs> I can't believe that was his reaction. Like you guys, if I ever get into some trouble, <laughs> Jacob is the last person I'm calling because there's no way that that was his reaction. You guys have to stay tuned. I'm also getting a lot of questions asked if the people I mentioned in my story times know that I made those story times. For the most part, if you do me dirty, you're going to end up being blocked so that I'm aware of they don't know of those story times. And if they do, then I mean, I don't really care if the shoe fits then wear it through growing my tiktok platform you guys and also instagram i feel like my favorite part thus far has been just meeting such amazing sweet souls especially girls because if you know for the longest time i feel like girls always hated me because literally you guys because i'm pretty and i'm just so glad that i have an amazing like support system and just amazing girls by my side so if you're watching you're literally one of them and i love you so so much also shout out to all the girlies who have dm me for advice literally thank you for trusting me with your life and honestly just for reaching out to me because i know it takes a lot to just trust i promise you guys i am a girl's girls your secrets are safe with me and all i want is you to be happy i also want to give the biggest shout out to everyone who stays on my lives especially my late night lives because i know there's other things you guys can be doing but the fact that you guys literally stay to chat with me on my lives means the world to me so jackie arlene irene chris all of you guys if you guys are watching thank you guys so much you guys literally are like my besties okay i'm running a little bit late it's 5 35 i need to make it to la by seven o'clock but this is my hair and makeup done you guys thank you guys so much for watching please never forget that ash loves you and i'm always gonna be here for you i'll send you guys a big big hug if you guys need it and i'll see you guys in my next video bye, bye. have you ever been followed or chased get ready with me while i tell you the time a girlfriend and i were being chased by a guy out on the streets if you are not aware i would say i am pretty fit i love to go to the gym I love to go running. You also are not aware, as much as I love to work out, I despise cardio, you guys. I was the type of girl who would always wake up around 4, 5, maybe 6 o'clock in the morning to get ready to start to go for a morning run. Also, if you're curious why I just don't do cardio at the gym, I feel like I'm just locked up in a room looking at four walls and I'd rather just go outside, enjoy the fresh air, 
enjoy nature but i've always just preferred to do cardio elsewhere it got to the point where i ended up getting a morning job and i'm talking about like going at four o'clock in the morning and obviously i was no longer able to do my morning runs i remember one day one of my girlfriends and i were messaging and i asked if she wanted to go on an afternoon slash late night run and she agreed i'm gonna lie you guys it was pretty late when her and i decided to go out for a run it was probably around 7 p.m 8 p.m there were some occasions where i would go run solo but for the most part this girl was always my partner in crime and i ended up meeting up at the gas station and for the most part you guys the gas station was like the center of where her and i lived so like for instance the gas station was here i lived here and she lived here so it was just like the center point if you're wondering i like to say the city where i live is pretty safe i am not scared at least yes i'm a paranoid person but for the most part i've lived here my entire life so i know the good areas and and obviously we're not to pass by her and i are on this run and we usually stop maybe like a mile in like there's a specific street that her and i usually stop at but we were like you know what i think we can do another mile so we continued to run the distance was a little bit further from our house but it was still like around the same area her and i are running and we passed by some dealerships and also if you guys are wondering wherever we are running there is always some sort of like light we're never in the dark her and i are running and the street that we both decided to turn on to go back home we had to pass by a dealership we end up seeing a random guy just standing by like the light where the dealership is my friend and i are literally looking at each other and we were like there's absolutely no way we're gonna run and go past this guy so her and i go in the middle of the street you guys we're literally running in the middle of the street so we can get past that street because all we needed to do was to pass the dealership and then go into the street that we needed to turn to go home while her and i are running in the middle of the street trying to pass this guy he looks at us he's trying to get our attention you guys and i swear to you her and i turn around to see how far we were from him and he puts down his pants we see his D and he starts to like like the M word like he starts when I was like yo what the fuck not only are we trying to get away from this guy because he's trying to chase us he is literally like right there and I was like oh my god there's no way he's literally giving a free show right now so where you guys her and I we literally book it and I start to get on the phone and call one of my good friends because he lived literally around the corner so my guy friend didn't answer so we had no other choice but to just book it so I kid you guys not we did not stop one bit and we just continue running home because at this point not gonna lie we were pretty paranoid and pretty scared and by the time we made it home my friend called me and he was like you guys don't need me to pick you up and I was like no dude like it's a little bit too late we're already home but yeah guys that is the time my friend and i went for a late night run and we were getting chased and we ended up seeing some d and someone just you know enjoying his life <laughs> this is the end of my story time thank you guys for 12k i can't believe we are already at 12k thank you guys so much for the love and support i will see you guys in my next story time remember that ash always loves you and yeah bye Am I wrong for eating my husband's entire birthday cake by myself? I'll preface this by saying that my husband's family and I don't get along. Like, at all. We're rarely ever on good terms, and for my mental health, I decided to put distance between us. Especially after I was blamed for my most recent miscarriage that happened three months ago. My husband can still see them and visit them whenever he wants. For me, I don't attend any of their events, not even Thanksgiving nor Christmas. My husband's 30th birthday was two days ago. I planned to celebrate with him. I bought a cake and a gift, but he said that his family invited him to celebrate his birthday and he really, really, really wanted to go because the birthday parties his family throw are like no others. We had an argument over this, but he told me to wait for him till he finished celebrating there with his family that we could celebrate together at home and eat a cake. After he left, I felt so terrible. I called him, but he turned his phone off. I was so mad, I took the cake and brought it into the living room and started eating from it. I ate the whole thing, not saving him a single piece. Guess I was so angry and it made me hungry. He came home and saw what I did and blew up saying I did this to be spiteful and to punish him for not ditching his family on his birthday like I wanted him to. I reminded him that I paid for the cake, but he called me petty and nuts. He ranted and ranted and said that he didn't get to eat cake at his parents' house because a lot of kids were there and he didn't get enough cake and what I did was 10 times worse. He's been upset with me ever since. So, am I wrong? I've been getting a lot of phone calls from him and my parents saying my wife is a loose woman and she needs to cover herself. Am I the asshole for not making my wife cover up at home? So my brother, 28 male, came over with his wife yesterday and spent the night with my wife, 27 female, and myself. It was worth mentioning that I come from a Muslim family and my wife does not. Ooh.
When my brother and his wife arrived, my wife was just getting home from work and she was wearing scrubs and her name badge. While I made polite conversation with my brother and my sister-in-law, my wife went to change clothes. It is also worth mentioning that my wife has tattoos, piercings, dyed hair, and stretched ears. Very much a stereotypical goth girl. When she was done, she came back into our living room in a tank top and a pair of shorts. My brother averted his eyes, but my sister-in-law couldn't stop looking at my wife. My wife has a tattoo from her thigh to her ankle on her left leg and a tattoo on her calf on her right leg. My wife finally noticed and asked my sister-in-law, like the tattoo? To which she simply blushed. My wife smiles and tells her, you're fine, I'm used to the stairs. You forget how many tattoos and piercings I have. My sister-in-law and brother both asked her how many. She has 7 piercings and almost 20 tattoos. The evening continues and during dinner, the conversation turns to my wife's tattoos. My sister-in-law asks if she's planning for more and my wife tells her yes and she is currently working on a full back piece. My brother rolls his eyes and continues to eat. Shortly after dinner, we're getting ready for bed and it's worth mentioning that my wife sleeps in a shirt and PJ pants. At no point is my wife nude or semi-nude. Before we go to bed, my brother comes into our bedroom and my wife is in the process of having me put tattoo lotion into the tattoo on her back. She has her shirt pulled up in the back, but her arms are over her chest, covering her breasts. My brother sees this and runs from the room. My wife is embarrassed, but I tell her not to worry about it as it's his fault for not knocking. Once I'm done, I go out to see what my brother needed. He tells me, I shouldn't see your wife in a state of undress. You need to be a better husband and tell her to cover up. My wife did not need to see her body. I did not need to see her body. I tell him he should have knocked and it's not my fault or hers. He and his wife left early the next morning. I've been getting a lot of phone calls from him and my parents saying my wife is a loose woman and she needs to cover herself. I tell them she doesn't and to leave her alone. My parents and brother now want an apology from us. So am I the asshole? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, this was kind of this was a kind of weird one for me because as a practicing also, I understand both sides. Okay. Okay. I think you guys need to set boundaries, right? If it makes some, it shouldn't. If it makes your brother and his wife uncomfortable, I think it'd be nice. You don't have to. I would have that conversation because they're conservative and they're Muslims and stuff. I'd be like, hey, wife, I love you. There's nothing wrong with you. That's all that matters. That I care about you, but. If it's okay when my family comes over, just to try to cover up, just to be respectful. There's nothing wrong with it, right? If you're okay with it, that's fine, right? But I can understand why I feel like it would kind of bother me if I saw my brother and his wife like that. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest because, right? And so, like, it just kind of goes against our practices. And to see your brother do that kind of stuff, it's like, it would bother you. But I think you're also, your brother made a really big deal. He shouldn't have barged into your room. It's not like you saw her butt ass naked. Like, he literally went into your bedroom, so what what was free game at that point like it's not your fault she sounds like a really nice person i just don't know like it's just ah I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do about it. This story is wild, so hold on. My husband and I have been married for two years. We're best friends, so we've had a really good relationship. We got married after six months of meeting each other. During that whole time, I met a lot of his friends, including his best friend. But he told me he had another best friend who was going to be traveling for a full year. One day, my husband tells me that all his friends are getting together to greet their best friend, the one who had been traveling for a full year. We show up to the party. And it turns out that this best friend is a woman. Not just any woman, but one that looks like she could model for Vogue. This woman was so good looking, I instantly got insecure. When her and my husband saw each other, they ran to each other's arms. Then I spent the entire night trying to be included in the conversation. Every time I would ask a question, she would answer it to my husband. She would never even look me in the face. Finally, I asked her if she had a problem and she said, no, I'm sorry. I'm just really excited to see my best friend. When we got in the car, I told my husband I didn't like her. Then he said that he knew exactly what I was going to say. And he also said not to worry because I would never have to hang out with her. And that he would hang out with her without me. Just to save me the trouble. Part two is up. I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do. That's when he told me that he would hang out with his girl best friend without me. So that he could save me the trouble of having to see her face. Then I asked him if he thought that she was more attractive than me. And that if he preferred to be with her than with me. He started to laugh and said no and he felt offended that i would even ask him so basically he didn't even answer my question sometimes he would tell me that he would go hang out with her at bars i would stay home and just literally cry the entire time i would get sick to my stomach picturing my husband hanging out with this vogue model that's when i reached out to my husband's best friend and asked him what the deal with her was and this man spilled all the tea he told me that they had all been best friends since college and that the vogue model was basically in love with my husband the entire time they were in college but my husband never paid attention to her but then he told me that they ended up hooking up one night and that after that my husband was hooked but then she didn't want to be with him. Instead, they decided to stay best friends. I ran to the bathroom and vomited. Part 3 is up. I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do. After finding out that my husband had hooked up with his girl best friend who was really attractive, I vomited. Even though this was before I had met him, something told me that she was probably still in love with him. That's when my husband's guy best friend who had just told me everything invited me over to his house. And then the idea just came to me. 
I'm gonna start hooking up with whoever I want if my husband's gonna be doing it with his best friend. So I went over to this guy's house, we had a few drinks, and I hooked up with him. Did I regret it? Absolutely not. I felt liberated. It's like I had gotten revenge on my husband. So after that, I went on a rampage. I tried to hook up with as many of his friends as possible. Exactly six guys. Then I looked for the guys that I liked in college, and I hooked up with a bunch of them too. In total, 14. This all happened in a month. But now my husband told me that his best friend, the girl that I thought he was hooking up with, is pregnant from another guy and that they're getting married. And that the whole time she was away traveling for a year, she was with this man. Now I feel like a total asshole. What should I do? Story time about the guy who pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So we're going to go ahead and call him Danny. And at the time I knew of Danny, but I didn't really know him. We weren't friends or nothing like that. Danny was known as the gay guy. He would always have his makeup done and he would hang out with some of the girls. Everything was fine and cool until we entered our junior year and Danny came out as transgender. He started wearing wigs and dressing more feminine like. Now, when he would get dressed up, he would look completely different than what he looked like as his, you know, born male self. You would think that he was a different person when he would get dressed up. Well, one particular day, he didn't get dressed up and he entered the girls' bathroom. When he did that, all of a sudden, it was a big group of girls running out of the bathroom screaming. If you guys want to know why they ran out, come back for part two. This is part two of the guy that pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So, like I said before, junior year was the year Danny came out as transgender. Some days he'd get dressed up, some days he didn't. When he entered the girl's bathroom, a group of girls ran out of the bathroom screaming. I think maybe a couple hours later after lunch, Danny was called to the office and rumors went around about Danny trying to look through the girl's stalls. One girl claimed that he was peeking through the stall to look at one of her friends. And Danny was suspended. I think two weeks later, Danny came back to school and she completely stopped wearing feminine type outfits. That same week, me and my friend Kenneth were walking past the boys' bathroom and we heard a lot of fumbling going on. I told him to go check what was going on. When he checked, there was a group of guys in the bathroom jumping Danny. I'm running out of time. Come back for part three. Part 3 of the guy that pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So, like I said earlier, Danny was in the bathroom and he was getting jumped by a group of guys. After it was over, he walked out last and he walked over to his locker. So, I followed him to see if he was okay and he had a black eye and his lip was busted. I asked him if he wanted me to walk him to the nurse and why did they even jump him? Danny replied, the guy said I'm not allowed into their bathrooms anymore. He said anytime he ever entered there, he'd get bullied or teased for being gay. Then I asked him, I thought you were transgender. He said he said that because he didn't want to go into the guy's bathrooms anymore. I said, what about the incident about you peeking through the girl's stalls? He said, I never looked through any other girl's stall. I was just seeing to see who was in the bathroom so I could go in. He said, I'm gay. I don't even like girls. And it wasn't my intentions to make anyone uncomfortable. Come back for part four. Am I wrong for wearing a wedding dress to a wedding? So this girl I've been friends with for a few years recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her saying she was having a small costume party to celebrate her getting engaged. So I asked if there was a theme and she said there wasn't. So I'm a cosplayer, so I had a lot of choices. So I thought it'd be really funny to go to an engagement party as a corpse bride. When I arrived at the house yesterday, everything seemed completely normal. A few people complimented my costume and I was having so much fun. After about 10 minutes, my friend's fiance walked out in a black tuxedo and told everyone that this was actually their wedding. Apparently my friend saw a video of someone else doing this and she wanted to do the same. He asked us all then to go to the backyard so that the ceremony could begin. At that point, I went straight up to him. I asked if I should quickly go home, change my outfit, and come back before the ceremony even started. And he told me it was absolutely fine considering that I didn't know it was a wedding. So I trusted him and I just followed everybody outside. We got married and everything seemed good. So the reception was at the house so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where we left off. I kept trying to talk to my friend and celebrate with her but she kept making excuses not to talk to me. I assumed it was because she was just tired and you know it was such a big day and I thought maybe she just wanted some space and alone time. I decided just not to bother her after that and the party soon ended. So about half an hour after I got home, my phone started blowing up with notifications. It was my friend and she was cussing me out, saying that I ruined her wedding day. I was obviously really confused and asked, you know, what did I do? And that only made her even more angry. She told me that it was basic knowledge not to wear a wedding dress to someone else's wedding day. I reminded her 
that I did not know that it was a wedding. And I said, I asked your now husband if he wanted me to go home and change. And he said that it was absolutely fine. So she didn't respond to that. But then I got a text from the husband asking why I would tell her that he said it was absolutely fine not to change. And I was like, babe, you were the one that told me it was fine. And then he says that I should have changed anyway. And now of course it's my fault that the two of them are fighting over this. I tried texting and saying that I was sorry and that if I'd have known, I obviously wouldn't have done this. But I woke up today to find that her and her husband had blocked me on everything. So what do you think? Am I wrong for kicking out one of my bridesmaids after she showed up in the wrong dress? My wedding was last week and I'm still getting backlash over this, so I wanted to know if I'm in the wrong. So where I live, it's winter at the minute and we've had a fair amount of snow. So my wedding was a winter themed wedding and I had a color theme of forest green and gold. So my dress was obviously white and I chose my bridesmaids to wear forest green. And then I asked if my maid of honor could wear black. And then we were all wearing gold accessories by this friend called Kat that I had asked to be one of my bridesmaids. So we went shopping and I told them all the colour theme I was going for with the bridesmaid dresses. And Kat immediately said that forest green was not a good choice. She said that she doesn't think it's a flattering colour and that I should choose something different and more grilly. <laughs> and I said no, because my wedding is a winter theme. And I thought that that colour was perfect to fit the theme. She suggested pink, blue and even red. So I said no, but thanks for your opinion. She somehow found out that my maid of honor was wearing black and asked if she could wear black as well. And I said no, only my maid of honor was wearing black. Just adding in that I also paid for all the dresses. So let's fast forward to my wedding day. Everyone is getting their hair and makeup done and Kat shows up 30 minutes late with a bag that looks like it has a dress inside it. So I asked her, you know, what's the bag for? She said it was a dress for the reception and she wanted to have it there. So if she felt uncomfortable, she could change after we'd had pictures. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm not here for the drama. So we're all walking down the stairs. The ceremony's about to start in like 30 minutes. So Kat is the last person to come down and she is wearing a black dress. So at the time I was preoccupied taking pictures with my parents, but my maid of honor came over and made me aware of the situation. So I did confront Kat and I asked her what was going on. She said that she hated her bridesmaid dress and it made her look gross. So she was just gonna wear black. I asked her to please go back and change and she refused and started to walk away from me. I said, I'm gonna ask you one more time and if you don't oblige, I'm gonna call security and kick you out. She then began yelling at me to F off. So I called security and I told them to get her out. She started to make a massive scene, calling me a bit. And then she said that I couldn't force her to wear anything and that I'm a horrible and inconsiderate friend. So the wedding went on and it was honestly amazing. Ever since the wedding, Kat has been blowing up my phone saying some really, really nasty things. She asked me for the money back that she spent on her black dress since it was a waste and she didn't actually get to wear it. I literally had to block her number. But now some of my other bridesmaids have started giving me shit. They said it was a little bit harsh kicking her out and embarrassing her like that. So what do you think? When I was younger, I grew up with a cut on my face. It went down from my cheekbone all the way down to my neck. It was very long, the longest cut anyone has ever seen. When I was in school, teachers and students would ask, how did I get that cut or if it still hurt? I would tell them it didn't hurt, but I didn't know where the cut came from. My mom actually told me I was born with it. Some teachers would say, that doesn't look like a cut you were born with. I think when I got a little older to understand, I asked my mom again, how did I get this cut on my face? She'd say, as usual, you were born with it. But I don't know, I just had a feeling there was something she wasn't telling me. If I could, I asked my dad, but my mom told me that he passed away a couple weeks after I was born. When I turned 18, I finally went to the dermatologist to see what was up with this cut. They told me the cut looked as though someone cut me with a sharp object. Later that week, I went to my aunt's house and told her about my dermatologist visit. She broke down in tears and started apologizing. Come back for part two. So after going to the dermatologist about the cut I had on my face my entire life, I went to my aunt about it and she broke down and cried. She apologized and told me that I needed to speak to my mom. She said she thought it would be best if she told me. So I went home a bit confused and I talked to my mom. I told her the dermatologist told me the cut on my face wasn't from something I was born with. My mom looked at me and said, I never told you because I didn't want you to feel bad about this, this family, your father, but when you were three weeks old, your dad did this to you. I said, what? What do you mean? He did this to me? Why? She replied, your dad was really sick. I cried and asked, why would he do this? She looked at me and said that he tried to get rid of you. We couldn't afford to take care of you. But I pushed him off of you before he could have did anything. She said my aunt had called the police. My mom and dad were fighting and they shot him and he died that day. You ever met a guy at the bar and your family decided to cock block? Get ready with me while I tell you the time. I went to celebrate my birthday a couple weeks ago. I met a guy and my family was literally in every freaking corner that this guy and I were at.
You guys are always requesting the products, so today I use the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, and then for foundation, I use the Frankie Rose in the shade Bear. For contour, I'm using the Makeup Forever Cream Contour, and I'm using this shade right here. If you guys are not aware, my birthday recently passed on June 30th, and honestly, I did not want to do anything for my birthday. Whenever my birthday comes around, I feel like... I don't want to do anything. I always get into these like weird sad funks and this time around I was over it you guys. I did not want to celebrate. I'm using the Dior concealer. Basically, I'm extremely close to my godmother. She's also my cousin too. But for a couple weeks now, she's been messaging me asking me what I want to do for my birthday and I literally was like nothing. I don't want to do anything and she was like, I don't care. We're going to do something. I'm not going to let you be sad this year. I don't think you guys understand how grateful I am for my cousin slash godmother because if it wasn't for her, I probably would have been in a really depressive state and i swear to you guys she is literally the reason why i am still standing here today so the day of my actual birthday comes and she was like come over we're gonna go get some brunch with my fiance and i was like okay cool so i ended up going to brunch with them and then shortly after she was like dude we should still continue the birthday celebration and i was like mm, no i don't want to she was like i'll gather a lot of my friends and then we'll also gather a lot of his friends which is her fiance which is my cousin slash uncle i don't even know what to call him point is their family <laughs> using maybelline powder so since i'm technically fairly new to the la area i do not know where to go out if i'm not mistaken they mentioned the bungalow and i'm familiar with the bungalow because i have a lot of friends who go to the bungalow but in a different location i was like okay why not i hear a lot of people talk about the bungalow let's just give it a shot but i was still like if you guys i feel like i forced myself to go out Lula bronzer by benefit my cousin basically calls bungalow in long beach and makes reservation for a party of i believe like nine or ten heads and i was like okay there's no going back because at this point there is a deposit and i'm not about to let everybody pay for a deposit and then me be whack and not show up because because i'm feeling depressed or sad or whatever the case is so i forced myself out and i'm glad that i did after brunch we go back to my cousin's house and then we end up calling an uber like three hours later and then we start heading to the bungalow if you're wondering who got invited the table basically was me my cousin her fiance my brother his boo thing and then it was like 10 friends of theirs so it was a lot of people we had one of like the biggest tables at the bungalow so we're maybe like an hour into the bungalow and keep in mind you guys i was the only single one i kid you guys not everybody was coupled up everybody was coupled up i was the only one like this and you know when you're single and you have alcohol in your system like ni se diga. hello everyone welcome to part two of the time my family cock blocked me and this guy while we were at the bar we are hours into the bungalow everyone is coupled up and i remember it was time to make a toast and i remember i was on this side of the couch and the friend that was making the toast was on the opposite side of me so i was able to like obviously see who was also behind him and i spotted this guy everyone always asks me what kind of guy am i into what is my type and i swear to you guys apparently they're fun boys when it's done making the toast and i remember we all lift up our glasses and i see that the guy is also lifting his glass so i ended up toasting with him too and right after that i looked at my brother's boothing and i was like He's kind of cute, huh? And she was like, no, Ash, no. And I was like, Ugh, okay. So I listened to her. Another hour passes by and another friend wants to make a toast. And this time around, the toast is, so it's like an L. So this time around, the friend was on this side and I was on this side, like, so I can pay attention. And I swear to you guys, on the opposite side was that same guy. I literally had forgotten about this guy and I spotted him and I was like, dude, I spotted him again. They told me no. Everyone's drunk. I'm single. I'ma go for it. I don't care. So when the toast was over, I made my way to the restroom. I say, I quote the restroom because that's what I told them that I was going. But I, in reality, was going to go to go say hi to this guy. 10 minutes into the conversation with this guy and his roommate, I swear to you guys, I literally look left and I hear voices and it's my freaking cousin and my brother. And then they begin to introduce themselves and they were like, you seem like good guys. Just take care of Ashley because we're really unprotective of her. And I was like, oh my God. But even like five minutes after that, the same two come and they come and give me a drink. And I was like, oh my God. So every time this guy and I were having a conversation, I would also like look back because at this point, like my table was right here. Me and this guy were right here. So I wasn't even trying to be like low key about it. I didn't even care. So every time I would turn around, everyone would just look at me and smile and just like shake their head no. But I 
didn't care because again, I was single and they were partnered up and I was just gonna be there like alone. Like, no. I knew that I needed to leave this area. So I told the guy, I was like, hey, like, let's go to the bar to take a shot. And he was like, okay, I'm down. So me, this guy and his roommate ended up going to the bar to go take a shot. And I swear to you guys, not even two minutes, I turn around and it's the same two people, my cousin and my freaking brother. And I was like, bro. <laughs> At this point, I just started laughing. I was like, are you guys serious? I was like, you guys really have to follow me everywhere I go. I was like, let me just have a conversation with this guy. Like nothing's gonna happen, I promise. I was like, you already went up to him and said that you trust him with me. And you gave him basically consent to talk to me. I was like, so leave me alone. So me and this guy take a shot and we literally leave. We leave to like the other side or like the other section that there is at the bungalow away from my family and at this point his roommate also left us because technically like we weren't alone because his roommate was always there i kid you guys not we moved to the other section and i don't even know who this person is but apparently he's like a part of my table he was just like a friend of a friend and he goes hey like are you okay like is everything good here and i was like yeah like i'm good i was like don't worry and he was like okay i'm just checking up on you making sure you're good and i was like dude like this guy isn't even family but like they probably sent him to go check up on us so because i knew we were just gonna get followed around I literally told the guy I was like, you know what? Let's go to the front table in front of my table so they can just see us And sure enough, we went we literally were in front of them having a conversation and I looked left and everyone was just like and they were like flipping me off but like they were being funny it was just like more of like they were just being protective over me and i totally understand but like dude it's literally one night i'm probably never ever gonna see this guy again like come on yeah guys that was the end of the night i think i ended up giving this guy my number but to be honest i don't even like care to think that he's cute i feel like it was just like <laughs> alcohol talking it was just alcohol talking i didn't end up continuing the conversation with him especially right now because i feel like i'm just like chilling guys this is the end of my story time let me know if you guys have a similar situation because if you do i would love to hear it thank you guys for 11.6k i love you guys so so much there was a girl named jessica phillips that went missing in my high school she went missing in the middle of our junior year when her parents came out about it the school put posters up everywhere alerts on the news two weeks later they decorated her locker Ever so often I see her closest friend weeping during class and the teachers would excuse them out. The devotion of love she was getting after she went missing was outstanding. But the thing is, no one liked Jessica. Actually, everyone hated her. Don't get me wrong, she was the most popular girl in school, but she was an asshole. She was very nasty and rude and did anything to get what she wanted. I heard she once gave this boy Ronnie peanuts for not doing her homework anymore. He wanted to get into sports and didn't have time for it. And he was allergic to peanuts. The girl was practically a bully. Her friends were all followers that secretly hated her but wanted to be her. But it's crazy to see them all crying over her whereabouts when they all wanted her gone. But I know why she went missing. Come back for part two. Jessica going missing didn't faze me. Actually, the days felt lighter when she wasn't there. Yeah, she was the talk of the town for weeks, but I'd rather that than to actually see her. And I know some might say I'm heartless, but Jessica did it to herself. So the night of Nicole's birthday party is when it all started. Nicole and Jessica were like frenemies. I mean, they were friends, but they were always in competition with each other. I'd say Nicole was the second popular girl in school. She was the first, but she dropped the second because she lost her boyfriend, Luke, to Jessica. He cheated on her with Jessica. I can say that's when the war started. Anyways, the night of Nicole's party, Jessica wasn't invited. I remember overhearing her during lunch that she was gonna plan to crash and ruin Nicole's party. Pretty devious if you ask me. So the night come and I go to Nicole's party. An hour goes by and I take a step outside of the side of the house to get some fresh air. I see Jessica creeping from the back. I say, Jessica, is that you? She looks at me and before I know when someone grabs her face and pulls her into the bushes. So the night Jessica went missing, I saw exactly what happened. She tried to sneak into Nicole's party, but she actually didn't get in. Not only because she wasn't invited, but she had got pulled into the bushes. When I ran to see where she was pulled, she was dragged by two guys into the streets. I was in shock and I stood there for a few seconds, but those few seconds, Jessica saw me. She screamed for me to help her, but I just stood there. I threw her into a car and drove off. I went back to the party as though nothing happened. After the party was over, I went back home and I kept replaying what happened over and over. Then that next Wednesday is when everyone started hearing about Jessica going missing. They said if anyone ever saw anything to come forward, but I decided not to. There were moments throughout the week where I felt like I should say something, but there were times that I felt like it was too late. I thought maybe she was dead by now and it'd be pointless for me to come out now. But everything changed when I got a message from a block number saying, why didn't you save me? 
I was once working at a fast food restaurant. Working there stopped me from eating from this place ever again. It's everyone's favorite spot to get burgers and fries, and it seems like no matter what people tell you, people still continue to eat because how cheap it is. But let's start with the customers. Always be nice to your servers, because I had a couple of co-workers that would take the burger meat, rub it onto the floor, and serve it to the customers that came off rude. The restaurant had mice, and if they found something, they got to it. There was a particular day where I accidentally left out the burger buns and the mice, of course, got to them. On my way to toss them into the trash, my manager stops me and says, we're low on stock for the burger buns. We need to keep those. And they were served to multiple families. There's way more dangerous things that went down, but if you guys want me to disclose everyone's favorite restaurant, let me know down below if I should make a part. Part two of the most disgusting fast food restaurant I've ever worked for. And here's a couple of things I think you should know. The hiring process is super easy. You literally just gotta be 16. Okay, so back to the food. When it came to preparing food, the guys in the back that would prepare the food would never change their gloves. They would go from touching doors, cleaning things, to back to preparing food again. I'm pretty sure most of the food they made was contaminated. Our manager was the worst. She loved the food they had and sometimes would pick up a batch of fries with her bare hands and would just eat as she worked. Half the time when she got done with counting money, she wouldn't wash her hands neither. And y'all know how dirty money is. Now exposing the restaurant. I said if you guys comment down below, I might just tell you guys what fast food restaurant it was. But if this TikTok blows up, I do not want to get sued. Just know they make burger fries and they're the most popular fast food restaurant in the world. Third time on how I found out my dad had a whole nother family through social media. I'm talking wife and kids. Okay, so my mom and dad met when I was three, but I could always recall him always being there in my life. So technically he's my stepdad. They got married and then two years later, my sister was born and another three years, my twin brothers, Trey and Tyrese. On my 17th birthday is when everything came out. Around that time, my mom was four months pregnant and I had posted a picture on my space of me and my family at my birthday dinner. Also, I forgot to mention, I wasn't even allowed to have social media. I didn't even have a phone, but I had a computer, but my parents didn't know I had a MySpace account. I think maybe a week after the post, I get a comment from a random person under the name of Sunshine. They say, hey, that's my dad. Are you his cousin or niece? We should talk. The profile pic was a picture of flowers. When I saw the comment, I was a little weirded out, but come back for part two if you really want to know what I did afterwards. Part two on how I found out my dad had a whole nother family through social media. So I posted my birthday picture. A week later, I get a comment saying, hey, that's my dad. Are you his cousin or niece? We should talk. Me being the investigator that I am, I went through the page, but they really had no pictures, nothing, just pictures of flowers. So I started thinking maybe they probably meant to put that underneath somebody else's post. Two months go by and I make another post for Mother's Day. It's a pic of me and my mom and my dad in the corner photobombing. Within five minutes of the post, I get another comment from that Sunshine account saying, I think we might be cousins. I was a bit suspicious about the account, so I went to my friends about it. When I showed my friend Deja, she said, ignore it because if you show your parents, they'll probably take your computer away because you have a MySpace account. My other friend Alice said, maybe y'all could be related, so you should reach out to the page. Later that night, I was feeling very anxious, so I messaged that account, and you're not even going to believe what they told me. Come back for part three. Part three on how I found out my dad had a whole nother family through social media. So I messaged that fake sunshine account and asked why did they keep making those comments underneath my post. They messaged back two hours later saying you were posting pictures of my dad. I responded back no that's my dad. Then they sent me a picture of a girl with my dad. I was like who's that other girl? They responded me. I was like no you're a fake page and she responded with another picture but with my dad and a whole nother woman and three kids, including the girl. When I saw that, I shut my computer down and later that day, I went to my friends to show them. They were so surprised and I asked them what I should do. Deja was like, don't do anything. If you do, your family is gonna fall apart. Alice buds in and just tells Deja to shut up. She was like, yo, you got another sister. Don't you wanna know who she is? I replied, no. Alice was like, you should tell your mom. Deja was saying no. And he was just arguing back and forth whether or not if I should say anything. Come back for part four. 
Hello everyone, get ready with me while I tell you the time I found out that the guy I was talking to was also entertaining somebody else. We're gonna call this guy Ernesto. Ernesto and I basically met at work and let me tell you guys right now, if you guys want to talk to somebody at your job, don't do it. I also need you guys to keep this in mind while watching the whole story time. I did not want to give this guy a chance. My friend kept on convincing me to talk to him because he really liked me and because he's a good guy. So I just remember some of my friends would be like, just give Ernesto a chance. He's a really nice person. He's a really nice guy. And my friends also knew who this guy was. So it was a little bit easier to, you know, get their input. I was like, honestly, no, like he's not my type. And he's a lot older too. I was 22 when I met him and I believe he's 30 or 31. After a lot of convincing and a lot of hanging out outside of work, not only just him and I, but like our co-workers would all hang out together. We were all really good friends. I finally just gave in. I was like, he's a really cool friend. Why not? Let's just give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, at least I tried. Biggest regret. Fast forward to a couple months later and a couple shifts later, I remember him and I decided to actually start to get to know each other, obviously more than friends. Because we were getting to know each other, we would see each other every single day. You guys, when I tell you I would go over to his house every single day, well, almost every single day, I was always there. We were always freaking together. It literally got to the point where he bought me a freaking toothbrush. And you guys, I think I found a picture, so I'm gonna enter it. Literally bought me a toothbrush and some makeup wipes, and he literally left it in his mirror cabinet in his freaking room when i seen that he had got me the toothbrush and the makeup wipes i instantly needed to ask questions the only reason i had a lot of questions is because i've been hurt and lied to a lot in the past and straight up i just have trust issues you sure like you don't mind that i have like the toothbrush and the makeup wipes that you bought me there and he was like no dude like you can even bring clothes that way you can have some clothes here whenever you come over because you're almost you're here almost every single day and i was like all right this guy's being froze and then he also was like i also see a future with you i want to build and grow with you and i was like all right, keep in mind he's 30 years old. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, he's playing games because bro, you're 30 years old, like, come on. I also need you guys to know that he lived with his siblings in the house. His parents were not together, but the mom lived, uh, I wanna say like an hour away. So I mentioned his sisters lived with him and you'd be surprised that I never really ran into them because they were never at home. They worked night shift, but they obviously knew who I am because um, Ernesto would tell them about me. Ernesto would always tell me where he was at and I remember one day he messaged me and he was like hey I'm gonna go hang out with the boys we're gonna be drinking at this person's pad and I was like okay that's cool just don't drink and drive please he was like no worries I won't drink and drive if anything he was like I'll just hit you up and I was like okay no worries hello everyone welcome to part two of the time that a guy I was talking to was also entertaining and talking to somebody else at the same time so we're texting throughout the whole night and honestly if I have a man and he wants to be with his boys I'm just gonna give him his time with his boys but I'll like respond here and there I remember that night he messages me and he was like hey i'm gonna start to go home and i was like you're not driving right and he was like uh my car's here and i was like no you're not driving he was like well can you come pick me up then and i was like sure so i ended up going to his friend's house to go pick him up so i go pick him up and i drove up at the house and he was like you don't want to get down and i was like no your sisters are there and he was like it's okay like you can just meet my sisters today and i was like no probably not the right time to meet them and he was like no come on and i was like okay whatever so i was just like whatever fuck it i'm gonna just meet the sisters today it is what it is that night when i met the sisters i remember them telling me oh my god we hear so much about you he talks about you every single day there's not one day that you're not brought up you're always in our conversation and i was like oh like all geeked up so that night that i met his sisters was over with and then the next day i was still at the house because i ended up spending the night and i think something happened with one of his family and so he was like do you want to come and i was like oh your mom's gonna be there i don't want to meet your mom and he was like no like it's okay my mom already knows who you are but i just knew at that time it wasn't the right moment to meet her but because i knew that they needed help i'm just the type of person that if like my man is going through something his family's going through something i just want to be there for him so i meet his mom i meet his brother and i already knew who his brother was but his brother from the very beginning was never on board because i was 22 and his brother was like 30 years old a week passes by so it's now saturday and i ended up going to work on saturday and he didn't one thing about me is i was a hustler this guy hated working and making money and i was like oh this is a huge red flag for me when i was at work i went on my break and i went on my instagram and i noticed that there was this one specific girl who kept looking at my stories and she was looking at my stories for days now but i didn't bring anything up to him because i just didn't have a reason to until finally she kept looking and i was like you know what i'm gonna just bring this up to him so i brought it up to him and i was like like hey who's this girl and he was like oh she's just like a random follower 
and I was like, are you sure? Because I was like, no girl, she's gonna keep on lurking every single day. I'm gonna answer the picture because I also have proof of that too. So he basically goes, Asher, right? I don't like liars. He was like, basically her and I used to talk, but that's it. She's just really obsessed with me and that's all. And I was like, okay. I remember that night he ended up going MIA and I was like, what the hell is wrong with this dude? Like, why are you going MIA after I just pressed you about a girl? Like, what? I remember, like an idiot, I blew him up and I was like, dude, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Did I do something wrong? Hello? Can I have some answers? Hello, everyone. Welcome to part three and the final part of the time that I found out that the guy I was talking to was also talking to somebody else, entertaining both of us at the same time. So I wasn't getting answers and I'm a really bad overthinker. And if you're an overthinker, you know exactly how I was feeling. It was so bad. I had so many questions everything was eating me alive i i couldn't I so i went to my dad to ask for advice and also my best friend and keep in mind i've never told my dad about anybody but because this guy introduced me to his family and i assumed that we were serious i just needed advice from my father at this point i was like he's gonna give me the best advice i know so my dad and i go out to eat and i tell him that i'm talking to ernesto and my dad knows who ernesto is he has an idea of who he is because of work I remember my dad told me he was like, look, Ash, he was like, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. He he's like, I'm not saying that he's just like everybody else. He was like, but just keep that into consideration. And so I took that into consideration. And then I also went to my best friend and I didn't mention, but this whole time, my best friend would just throw hints at me because whenever she would tell me something, I would never listen to her because I was always like, I just want to go through this on my own and if I screw up, it's on me. So I never really like took her advice or took a lot of the things that she was hinting out to me that I should stop talking to him up until the very end, what very end when he started going ghost. Later on in the day, I ended up going to my best friend's house and she basically spilled all the tea. So she was cool with his guy best friend and he ended up telling her that he was just playing me that he had another girl and he was just making it seem like he really was into me basically wanted someone to be by his side and comfort him so when my best friend told me this i was so delusional and i was like no there's no way like he's did all of this he's bought me freaking a toothbrush he told me to leave his clothes at the house like bro your best friend telling you this your freaking dad just gave you advice just listen to them so the next day i remember i called him he didn't answer i called him again he didn't answer so i texted him he wasn't answering so i facetimed him he finally Finally answered he was like hey like i'm at shaky's with my family and he literally turned the phone over and he was like look say hi to them and keep in mind i already knew that there was another girl because my best friend just finished telling me because it came from his homie and so then i was like you know what i was like just be honest with me and i was like you know what as a matter of fact i was like we're done i was like i'm not about to sit here and play your freaking games i was like i'm so done with you i was like you're so immature you're 30 years old i was like i expected more from you guys i'm cutting him off and he has the audacity to be like no ash i really want to work this out with you and i was like bro you have another girl like what are you talking about he was like no i don't he was like don't believe what other people are saying da, 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 da. and in my head i was like how do you know somebody else told me you're and I was like, nope, you're not convincing me. I'm done with you. I was like, you're being so inconsistent. And it was like, a week ago, you told me that we're going to have this conversation. It's literally been almost two weeks and you're still pushing back this conversation. I was like, absolutely not. I was like, I'm not about to deal with you. Next day around at nighttime, me and my best friend hopped in my car. I had all his stuff. And I remember I drove to his house and I told my best friend, I was like, please, can you just drop this off on his freaking AC thing? And she's like, no, you go. And I was like, no, please, because I don't want him to see me. And it's just better off because I'm already driving. So you just go put the stuff and we run back in the car and then we just drive off and she's like fine so literally my best friend and i went to his house dropped off his stuff and that was the end of everything we ended up blocking him on everything and it's funny because my best friend still had him on social media and i kid you not you guys maybe like two weeks later he posted a picture with this girl at dodger stadium with her daughter and i was like what the heck like how did he put this off so good because first of all if he was talking to this other girl already how is it that she didn't notice my makeup wipes my clothes in his room and not to mention you guys whenever him and i were together which was almost every single day he was never on his phone so like how did this other girl not catch on that he was probably with somebody else because he really played me good but yeah guys that is the end of my story time if you guys have a similar story let me know down in the comments below because these guys have the audacity i'm so over it i'm so freaking over it. anyways thank you guys always for the love and support we're so close to 10k i love you guys so so much
story time about how I was accused of sexually harassing my coworker. This, this is my story time. I did post this yesterday, but it was like five minutes long, so here we are. Back in 2018, I had just gotten married and my best friend was working at a company called S3 in New York City. I was so excited to get this job, you guys. I was so broke at the time. Before that, I had worked as everything. I was an assistant, maid, served at like 20 different restaurants, I worked at the strip club, and I did a whole slew of other things. This job paid me $8,000 a month. It was amazing. Like, I thought I was set for life. The job was pretty simple and it was really stress-free. I had to make phone calls and sell a financial app. And I was pretty good at it. Like I said, my best friend got me this job and it was really nice because I got to hang out with her every single day at work. Now, my desk was next to somebody called Justin. Justin was one of the salespeople at the company. I heard from a few people that before I got there, Justin was not the friendliest. He wouldn't make jokes or laugh. But after I got there, his attitude completely changed. To be honest, I had fun with him. He was a great coworker. But of course, that was it. I didn't see him as anything else other than a coworker. He and I would make jokes all the time. We talked about music and movies. He would talk to me about his dating life. And I would give him advice. This man either had really strong feelings for me or he really hated me because he ended up getting me fired part two is a story time about how i was accused of sexual harassment and i got fired for it this is my personal story time by the way the villain of the story named justin he and i got along really well and i sat next to him every single day at work by the way justin was the youngest guy out of the entire company everyone else was middle-aged white men while me and my best friend are beautiful and young and gorgeous as you can imagine we got stared at a lot to be honest this didn't really bother me because i've been stared at a lot in life but when you find out what happened, it's infuriating. Walking down the street doing this voiceover. This is how badly I want to post this. The owner of the company is Bob. Bob and I got along really well. You see, I thought I was taken seriously in this workplace. I thought that I had value. But of course, apparently to these older white men, I did not. The day I get home from work and I get a message from Gabe, my manager. I don't like Gabe. Gabe told me not to come into work. And the following day, he tells me not to come into work again. Can you see how this would freak anyone out? I had a really bad feeling. Serena had no idea what was going on. If she did, she would tell me. This girl had my back always. Part three will be up soon story time about how I was accused of sexually harassing my coworker and got fired for it. This is my personal story time. Well, when I was told for the second time not to come into work, I was completely freaked out. Serena, who got me the job, asked me to meet her at Central Park. I had a bad feeling. Can you guys believe that S3 asked my best friend to fire me? They didn't have the balls to do it themselves because they knew that what they were firing me for was completely unfair. I get to Central Park and Serena tells me that they fire me. By the way, another coworker was there. His name was Jason. By the way, Jason had the same job as Serena and I and got paid a lot more. Inequality does exist. Went into a depression. I was anxious. I was afraid didn't know what had happened. Emailed the company asking what happened and they didn't want to tell me. Anyway, a couple of months later, I find out that Justin had gotten me fired. He told the boss that I was offering him blowjobs. By the way, when I got fired, Justin offered me financial help. Pretended to be my friend. What an asshole. Story time on how I found out my friend was homeless and at the time we were both 11. And let's call her Leah because I don't want to expose her real identity. Me and Aaliyah were really close. She always wanted to come over my house. My family liked her around because she was like another daughter. My mom loved the fact that she ate her cooking, and also I was the only girl. I had three other siblings that were all boys, so Aaliyah was basically my sister. Anytime I'd go outside, Aaliyah was always outside, so always had someone to play with. But one thing um, I will say is that she smelled funky, but I ignored it because she was a really nice person. Anyways, my birthday came up, and I wanted to have a sleepover. My mom said she needed to talk to everyone's parents to make sure if they were allowed to sleep over. My mom talked to everyone's mom besides Aaliyah. I asked Aaliyah if her mom could speak to my mom, but she said she didn't need permission to sleep over. I was like, you're lying. Where do you live? And she's like, never mind. I probably can't. I'm going to just go home. I was like, go home. And she was like, yes, I got to go. When she left, I secretly followed her home. She walked for about 20 minutes until she came to a stop and went into a tent by a tree. I'll be back with the next part in part two. Part two on how I found out my friend was homeless and at the time we were both 11. So like I said earlier, I followed her home for about 20 minutes until she came to a stop and went into a tent by a tree. I was so confused because she told me she was going home, why lie? So I went closer to the tent and shook it and then went around to open it. When I opened it, she had canned food piled in the corner with a blanket down the bottom. She had a lot of things packed into her little old tent. I asked what's going on, are you going camping? She looked down and said, this is where I live. I was like, how does your family live in here? And she cried and explained that it was just her. Come to find out, she was a foster, but she ran away from home because her foster mom would bring in strange men around her and the rest of the girls that lived in the house with her. I'm not going into full details about what happened because I don't want to put too much of her business out there, but she was touched. It took a couple days for her to come out and tell me about it. She begged me not to tell anyone where she lives because she didn't want to get sent back. But I didn't feel right knowing that she lived in that tent. Come back for part three. Part three on how I found out my friend was homeless. And at the time, we were both 11. So I found out she was living in a tent due to her not liking the treatment she was getting by her foster parent. 
she told me not to tell anyone where she lived because she didn't want to go back but i didn't feel okay knowing that she lived in that tent so a week later i went and told my mom everything she told me and i was hoping she could help I suggested to my mom maybe we could adopt her but my mom wasn't too fond of the idea so she called this hotline. I forgot the name but they supposedly helped with stuff like this. She told them everything I told her and I also spoke to them myself. Then maybe the next morning they came into my house and they wanted me to direct where Aaliyah was living. They found her and took her in. I was so happy that she was going to get the help she needed but two months later I didn't see nor hear from her. I asked my mom if she could call the hotline people, but she said she would, but she never did. Then maybe two to three weeks later, I see Aaliyah outside and I get excited and run to her. And when I get closer, she had a black eye. I was like, what happened? And she said, you, and walked away. After that day, I never saw her again. Am I wrong for wanting my sister to walk me down the aisle despite my fiance and his family's objections? So I was basically raised by my older half sister. I never met my dad and our mom passed away when we were both young. My sister's dad was still in her life and was willing to support her, but not me. My sister decided that she wanted to be my guardian and as a result of that, her family went low contact with her. In order to raise me, she gave up a lot. She gave up her twenties, the opportunity to go to college and so much more. So a couple of months ago, I got engaged and along with being my maid of honor, I asked if my sister would walk me down the aisle. And throughout my life, she has fulfilled so many roles for me. She's been my big sister, my mom, my dad, my friend. So it only felt right that all of those big roles were honored on one of the biggest days of my life. And my sister was absolutely ecstatic. But when I brought this up to my fiance, he was not happy. My fiance's family are extremely traditional and he'd always expected his wedding to be a traditional white wedding. And his reasoning for this is because that role is normally done by a man. And apparently it had always been assumed that his father would be the one to give me away considering I don't have any male relatives. And I did tell him that I was really appreciative of his dad wanting to be the one to give me away. But I said, my sister's the one that's made me who I am today, so it's only right that she's the one that gives me away. So this then turned into an argument that spread into my in-laws. My mother-in-law called me a few days ago and said, even though she understands how important my sister is to me, that it's also my fiance's big day too, and I shouldn't be putting my sister in front of him on his big day. I definitely understand what she has to say, but this is really important to me. And at this point, my sister's turned around and said that she doesn't even mind just being maid of honor because she doesn't want a happy day to turn so stressful. So now it's just me holding out and being stubborn. But I just don't want to give in at this point. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for telling my brother that girls avoid him because he's creepy and not just misunderstood like my mum insists? So my younger brother who's 18 has just started to show serious interest in relationships. He's a really sweet guy but he often just says things that come across like really weird. I guess it's not so bad day to day but it really does make his dating life a lot more difficult. For example, this one time we're at a beach club and he was chatting to a girl and she really did seem interested and engaged in the conversation. And just a little FYI, this girl was quite short and very petite. And my brother told her that she just looked so tiny and helpless. Which, you know, isn't too bad, but then he said he could easily abduct her because he could fit her in his bag. Now, because I know him, I know that he's not intentionally being creepy. But I just don't think that he understands that some things sound really creepy when you say them out loud. And this poor girl just did this fake laugh, walked off and never came back. Then a few days ago, we were in a cafe and he met a girl again. They ended up swapping numbers and he came to me and excitedly told me that they were texting. Then yesterday, he came to me all depressed and he showed me their text exchange. So earlier that day, she texted him and she said that she wasn't a fan of scary movies because she gets easily spooked. So late that afternoon, she asked him if he wanted to hang out that weekend. And he jokingly said that he'd sneak into her room at night when she least did expect it and make her scream. He didn't think that was wrong at all and he only noticed something was up when she didn't respond to his text messages. So he's been pretty bummed out all day about it and he's been moping around the house. So I told him honestly and I said you need to stop saying creepy things so that girls stick around. And then I said he's a big tall boy which ups the creep factor to anything he says. He got very defensive in her and tried to say that he wasn't creepy. When my mum found out she got all defensive of him and said it was wrong of me to label him a creep. She said that he's just a bit of a misunderstood soul and that I should have a little bit more tact instead of just insulting him. So I turned to my brother and I explained that he's not a misunderstood soul in other girls' eyes. He's just a big tall guy who says really creepy things. He got really upset and we had a big argument after that. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for refusing to go to my best friend's boyfriend's birthday after she demanded to approve my outfit? My best friend Kate has a boyfriend called Jamie and they've been together for nearly three years. We met him on a night out and although he's Kate's boyfriend, I would definitely consider him a friend. So Jamie's 30th is coming up and they've decided to throw him a really big party. I've even helped them with the logistics of it all when they've asked. So the other day, Kate texted me and she asked me if I wouldn't mind toning down my look for the party. And she asked if I could send a picture of my outfit once I decided what I wanted to wear. And I found this a little bit odd. 
So I asked her what she meant by this. And she asked me if I wouldn't mind dressing frumpy. And it was because she didn't want to be out shone on her boyfriend's birthday. When I didn't reply straight away, she went on to say that she really wanted Jamie's full attention that night. And she said she wouldn't get this if I showed up dressed properly. And I was a little bit annoyed by what she was implying here. So I said, if I'm going to be that much of a concern to you, I would rather just politely decline the invitation. She then freaked out and said that I was being immature because I wasn't allowed to steal the spotlight. I said that I would just send Jamie's gift and she could tell him why I wasn't coming anymore. So she never actually told Jamie the real reason why I wasn't going. Because he texted me and said that he'd heard that I was booked and asked if I could rearrange my plans. And I said I wouldn't be going because Kate was insisting that I dressed a certain way. And then he started to call me. And he said that a couple of months ago, he'd gone out with a group of his friends and Kate. So everyone had had a lot to drink and the topic of how each couple met came up. And when it was Kate and Jamie's turn, Kate asked why he decided to flirt with her and not me. And one of Jamie's friends turned around and says it's because he knew he didn't have a chance with a hot one. Kate asked Jamie if this was true. And with him having so many drinks in him, he described it in a way that made it sound like it was true. He basically said that, yeah, he did see me, but he knew he didn't have a chance with someone like me. He then went on to say that actually speaking to Kate was the best outcome of it all because he loves her so much now and wants to spend the rest of his life with her. He said that they had spoken about it since and Kate says that she's over it. But he's noticed some changes in Kate's behaviour that suggest otherwise. He then said that he'd been planning to propose to Kate at his party and that is why he asked me to change my plans so that I could be there. But after all of these changes in her behaviour and hearing what I had to say, he's decided that he doesn't want to propose anymore. So after I spoke to Jamie, I did end up calling Kate and she did apologise. She said that she'd found a lot of self-worth in being in a relationship. But she did say sorry for trying to solve her insecurities through me. She then said, however, that she didn't know if she'd be able to have me in her life anymore with the way that she'd been feeling. So now I've probably lost a long-term friendship over the drunken awkwardness of other people. So what do you think?